the spring, uh, we grow the host plant for the carnival blue butterfly. It only eats lupin. So the rest of the greenhouse is, um, is basically just for the lupin propagation. And um, the containment area is for the, the area that we actually do the captive rearing. And then as they start to pupate, uh, it takes them about a week. So um, then those butterflies will start eclosing and then we start releasing the butterflies into the various locations that we've, we've selected. We bring those, we kind of chill those girls in a, in a cooler. <laughs> then we bring them here to the Toledo Zoo. We put them under a net, a netted pot like this, with a lupin, a nice lupin plant underneath. Uh -huh. And then we hand feed those every day with a little wick of raw honey solution. Uh -huh. And so we're feeding them and we're caring for them and keeping the humidity just perfect and the temperature. And then they lay eggs. Butterfly, you know, can lay anywhere between, you know, 20 to 300 eggs. She lays the eggs on the plant. Every day we count them. If she's laid enough eggs on one plant, then we move her on to another plant. So any one female can go through like, you know, 30 different plants that she's laid eggs on. Then uh, as those eggs start to hatch, then we have to count those caterpillars, make sure that they're on, on good vegetation, that they haven't eaten all the vegetation. Um, if they are eating a lot of the vegetation, then we have to put them on another plant so to transfer those caterpillars. The caterpillars go through about four instars before they pupate. So that's generally about three weeks of caring for caterpillars. Constantly. Caterpillars, their needs are basically just lupin. Lupin is perennis. It's the only thing that they will eat. And then as when those caterpillars close as adults, then the adults' needs are different. Their, their needs are just nectar, so they need flowers that they are able to nectar off of so with those small, um, like a flower, something like this, or milkweed, or a lot of the different flowers that are out in the habitat. We're reintroduction sites now, and um, they're doing very well. They've come back at every reintroduction site. And uh, we normally, if we have reintroduced at a site and we're going to be reintroducing the next year, we will mark the butterflies so that we can tell the difference between wild and what we're, what we're releasing. And so uh, we always see unmarked butterflies in the locations that we've been releasing in. So it's a sense of satisfaction. I feel like I've actually done something and means something. Um, you know, a lot of projects people can work on for years and years and years and never see successes. And it might not ever, you know. And, and thankfully, insects, their lives are so short that things happen so fast that I'm able to see those successes. And throughout the years, and it's great. It feels like I've really done something um, meaningful. And to be doing it in my own community, to bring, to have brought back something that was missing, back to an ecosystem, and um, have people be excited about it, and uh, just watch the changes in, in habitats. Uh, lots of different organizations, you know, buy up habitat in the oak openings and restore it. And in the past, you know, 12. 13 years, I've seen areas just become beautiful, amazing places that I never thought that they could be um, when they've been purchased and restored. So it's really exciting. It's really exciting to go back and see the butterflies every spring, have them appear and know that it worked and that they're there and it happened. And it's just wonderful, you know, to feel like you, you were a part of something bigger. And then just go.